And let us pray together. God, in these moments, would you come to us? Whoever we are, wherever we are, as we are. Speak to us, O God, and help us to listen to your voice. That we might be transformed by the power of your Spirit. In the name of Christ, amen. When I was recently rereading these passages of Scripture from the Old Testament prophecy of Jeremiah, about what was happening in the 7th century B.C. in Israel. I don't know why, but I thought of the 1984 movie, Places in the Heart. Did you ever see that movie? It's almost, and I know this is a preacher talking, but it's almost a sermon in a movie. Places in the Heart It was a major motion picture that came out in 1984. It's the story of a community in Waxahachie, Texas in 1935 during the Great Depression. There was extreme poverty, homelessness, and joblessness, injustice, racism, violence, and adultery. And while people appeared to be God-fearing and church-going, their piety was actually a farce. They had forsaken God in many ways. As the movie begins, Roy Spaulding, the sheriff, is accidentally murdered by an intoxicated young man with a gun. Vigilantes load up in trucks to avenge the sheriff's death. The young widow, Edna, and her two children, Frank and Possum, are faced with loss of income and the possible loss of their home and their farm. Well, the unscrupulous loan collector is out to acquire Edna's home, and he strongly advises her to sell out but she refuses. So he sees their financial struggle as an opportunity to pawn off on them his blind brother-in-law as a boarder. Meanwhile, Edna's sister's husband is involved in an illicit affair with the married school teacher. The only hope for Edna is to save her home and land by planting cotton on their acreage with the help of a drifter named Mose with questionable character. She hopes to win the prize money for being the first to bring the cotton harvest to the cotton gin. Well, the cotton gin operator tries to take advantage of Edna's ignorance of buying seed and planting a crop because it's something she's never done before. So this newly formed family of strangers, Edna and her children and Mose the drifter and Mr. Will the blind boarder struggle to get along and learn how to help one another. A tornado sweeps across the community and their farm and it requires each one of them to risk their own life to save the other. Well, the bonds that are forged during this disaster help them to meet the greatest challenge of all, harvesting the cotton crop and getting it to the cotton mill on time. After winning the prize for the first cotton to arrive at the gin, the KKK pays a visit to Edna's farm and nearly kills Mose, the black itinerant farmhand, 
So Moses decides it's best to move on for the sake of the others. Those left behind must find ways to build a new and better community. So this hardship of this storm of hardship and injustice and sin and violence and dishonesty and racism and prejudice and greed and hatred and infidelity gives the opportunity for grace and mercy. Last Sunday afternoon, the clergy of our church gathered at my house to watch the movie Places in the Heart together. We had all seen the movie before. Some of us had seen the movie several times, but we watched it together trying to find God in the midst of such a disaster, even as we do in our lives today. During the movie and some of the most horrible scenes, I looked over and our senior pastor, Carol Wilson, was sitting on the couch and she had her head covered with her hands and she was peeking through her fingers at the movie like this. There were some difficult scenes in the movie, difficult to watch. But I think that's the way we watch the evening news and the morning news. I think that's the way we read the newspaper in our day. For the things that were happening in Waxahachie, Texas in 1935 are happening today. And sometimes we just want to look out at the world through the fingers of our hands and say, surely this cannot be happening. This is 2019. Who are we? And what have we become? But we believe and our faith assures us that God works in and through and in spite of all of the horrible human experiences to bring about redemption and hope. In the darkest of times, bright lights emerge and healing begins. Well, long ago, Jeremiah was called by God to speak to the people in his day and call them back to God. He called them to repentance. Now there's a word you don't hear much about nowadays. And yet it's the message all through Scripture. It was the message of John the Baptist, not just the Old Testament prophets. It was the message of Jesus. Repent. Change. Turn. The kingdom of God is at hand. And even though it seems like an archaic term, it's exactly what is needed today. Like never before, we need to hear God's message of repentance to us as a nation, as a church, as individuals. So Jeremiah spoke on behalf of God calling them back to God because they had forsaken God. God had claimed them and called them and provided for them, but they had forsaken God and turned to idols that were like broken wells or broken water pots, unable to hold water. The God who had generously and graciously given them everything they needed Everything to sustain them was now forsaken. And when they turned away from God, they turned toward the very things that were self-destructive. They turned to things that were like broken wells and broken water pots, unable to hold water. In other words... When they turned from God, they turned to things that were not able to satisfy, not able to keep them going. The whole community 
according to Jeremiah, was guilty of turning away from God. It wasn't just one or two extreme cases. They had all forsaken God. Oh, like the folks in Waxahachie, Texas, in the movie Places in the Heart, the people of Israel continued to go through the motions of worship. They said all of the correct things, and yet their lives betrayed God. So Jeremiah points out how far-reaching, how deep-seated this God-forsakenness was. The priest, the lawmakers, the scribes, the political rulers, and even the prophets had all turned away from God. As a result, they had external threats from enemies such as the Assyrians and the Egyptians and the Babylonians. And so Jerusalem fell at the hands of her enemy, the Babylonians. In 587 B.C., the temple in Jerusalem was destroyed and the walls were leveled and many of the people were taken away captive. Internally, Israel was a mess. They had political and religious conflicts and divisions due to their God-forsaken ways. Now, does any of this sound familiar? Seriously. What was happening in 7th century B.C. in Israel is happening today. We too are a God-forsaken people. God has not forsaken us. We have forsaken God. Their only hope and ours is to repent and return to God. So Jeremiah calls them to see themselves for who they really are and to recognize their brokenness. So on this first Sunday of September, God is calling us as a nation, as a church, as individuals to repent and seek God. I believe that God can and does hear our prayers and that God can and does forgive our sins and restore us to right relationships and God gives us hope. I wonder this morning if God is speaking to you. God is certainly speaking to me. What are those broken wells, those broken water pots in my life? What are those things that I've turned to? How have I turned away from God? Was there a time in your life when God was more real? When your love for God was deeper and more meaningful? When your commitment to God was true and honest. Where are you today? Where are we as a church today? Where are we as a nation today? God is speaking to us. Are we listening? And how will we respond?